Do you know any Christers? You know those people who only go to church two times a year, Christmas and Easter? They're the cause for the massive spike in church attendance during those two services. And while no serious scholar would debate the validity of Christmas, the birth of Jesus, you know many today do in fact debate the validity for Easter, that is the resurrection of Jesus, the point upon which all Christianity either rises or falls. In this video, I want to give you just a few of the many evidences for why I believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Before we begin, it's best to think of the evidence for the resurrection as a brick wall. While a single brick does not have much utility, as more and more bricks are laid together, they form an imposing defense. The first brick or first piece of evidence is the empty tomb. The main story across the Gospels goes like this. After the crucifixion, Joseph of Arimathea takes the body of Jesus and puts it into the tomb, which is then sealed and guarded. On Sunday morning, the women come and find the tomb empty, and an angel tells them, he's not here, for he has risen. Combining all the biblical narratives, we find the names of those involved and the location of the tomb. Jews as well as Christians could have asked the people that were there, or they could have gone for themselves to see if in fact the tomb was empty. What we see from the beginning instead are excuses being offered for why there is no body in the tomb. In other words, at the time of the resurrection, detractors were already trying to explain away the absence of a body. Moreover, many people saw Jesus alive. We've all seen crime shows where a grave site is exhumed only to find that there's no body in the casket. Why is it that investigators don't entertain the possibility that this person has also raised from the dead? Well, the obvious reason is that no one has seen the dead person walking around since being buried. You know that more than 500 people saw Jesus alive? They touched him. They talked with him. The second piece of evidence is the behavior of the disciples. After the crucifixion, we know that the disciples scattered and were scared, but then suddenly their behavior changed from that of fear to one of boldness in proclaiming Jesus, a boldness which cost most of them their lives. Why the change? Well, the scriptures say that it's because they saw the resurrected Jesus. Unlike followers of other religions who may die for their beliefs, no one dies for what they know to be a lie. And yet the disciples, without exception, went to their graves without ever recanting their eyewitness testimonies. Even secular scholars will note that Jesus' disciples did in fact believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Thirdly, we look at the explosion of growth from the early church and the fact that Christianity started in Jerusalem. What do you do with centuries of Jewish customs changing almost overnight and the rapid spread of this new religion? Most scholars agree that changes in cultures and worldviews are slow processes. There must be time for these new ideas to percolate, to rise from creation to general consensus to acceptance. There was none of that in the early church. There was no time for process or development. For instance, literally overnight, the day of worship changed from Saturday, the Sabbath, to Sunday, the Lord's Day. Finally, how do you explain changed lives? Jesus' brother James was one of the earliest skeptics, as well as the Apostle Paul. Both men became not only followers of Jesus, but also martyrs for their faith. Throughout history and to this very day, people's lives are being changed after encountering the resurrected Jesus. You know, there once was this radio disc jockey in Omaha, Nebraska, who was well known for one thing, being irreverent. But when this radio DJ was confronted with the good news of Jesus Christ, he had a life change. That DJ in Omaha was me. And like millions of others, I am living proof that Jesus' death and resurrection 2,000 years ago is still changing lives today. It is the power of the gospel to transform lives that is perhaps the greatest evidence of all. I'm John Sorensen, and this has been Reasonable Answers for Honest Skeptics. If you like Reasonable Answers, like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let us know what tough questions you get asked when witnessing and what topic you think we should cover.